Welcome back to Dan's On Fandoms. I'm Dan. The 2017 canon novel, From a Certain Point of View, which is an anthology of 40 short stories, provides a look at the events of A New Hope, but from the vantage point of background characters or characters who didn't have major roles in the film's plot. Amongst the stories within the novel, one story in particular provides insight into one of my favorite characters in Star Wars that being our little green friend, Yoda. The short story which is titled There Is Another provides readers with a look at Yoda's life on Dagobah just before Obi-Wan Kenobi's duel with Darth Vader and the subsequent days following Obi-Wan's death at the hands of his former apprentice. Additionally, the story provides readers with knowledge of how and when Yoda first learned of Obi-Wan's death and also how Yoda learned that Obi-Wan was able to manifest as a Force ghost. It's an absolutely fantastic story story and one I'd highly recommend. The story begins with Yoda venturing away from his hut in the uplands of Dagobah to travel to his other hut in the lowlands of Dagobah, hoping to escape the coming heat that will grip the uplands, as well as to hopefully plant some seeds he's gathered over the years. As Yoda traversed the Dagobah wilderness, he felt a familiar presence in the Force, the presence of his dear friend Obi-Wan. Excitement and joy stirred within Yoda as he sensed his friend and fellow Jedi. That sense of elation was quickly stymied, however, by an overwhelming sense of foreboding, anger, and loneliness. Yoda realized that the dreadful feeling he felt within the Force was that of Anakin, or, as Yoda stated, what had become of him. Yoda then felt the thrum and pulse in the Force of both Obi-Wan and Darth Vader, and in that instance, he was sensing Obi-Wan and Vader's duel on the Death Star. Yoda's attention was quickly pulled from Obi-Wan and Darth Vader's duel, however, to a probe droid that had found its way to him. After using a pot that Obi-Wan had given him to hurl at the probe droid's eye, the droid self-destructed, destroying itself and Obi-Wan's pot along with it. An instant later, Yoda felt Obi-Wan's presence in the Force swell and swell, only to suddenly move in a quick burst into the nether realm of the Force. Yoda also felt Darth Vader in that moment, whom he still called Anakin, fall into an even deeper pit of despair and loneliness after he killed his former master, Obi-Wan. Before Yoda could further process the tremor he felt in the Force, two more probe droids descended upon him, but he made quick work of them and continued on towards his hut in the lowlands. After arriving at his lowlands hut, Yoda spent several days planting and tending to his seeds, as well as getting his hut back to livable conditions. During this time, Yoda found himself dwelling on his friend Obi-Wan and the fact that he had died. Loneliness soon plagued the old Jedi Master, regardless of how much he tried to remind himself to rejoice in Obi-Wan becoming one with the Force rather than mourn or miss his friend. But his loneliness would not abate, so Yoda reached out with the Force, hoping to speak with Qui-Gon Jinn. After several attempts to reach out to Qui-Gon, he finally heard a voice, but not the voice he had expected. Instead, it was the voice of a familiar individual, a friend and fellow Jedi Master. It was Obi-Wan, now communicating with Yoda from the nether realm of the Force. Obi-Wan, as witty as ever, announced himself to Yoda by informing the Grand Master that Qui-Gon was occupied, and for the first time in a while, Yoda's hut felt full of life, as a shimmering image of Obi-Wan appeared before him for the first time as a Force ghost. Before the two could discuss pressing matters, however, Obi-Wan couldn't pass up the opportunity to be sassy and asked about the pod he had given to him, which had been destroyed during Yoda's scrum with the probe droids. The two friends and Jedi Masters soon discussed more pressing matters, and Obi-Wan requested that Yoda take on a new apprentice specifically Luke Skywalker. At first, Yoda denied Obi-Wan his request, instead stating that he preferred to train the other Skywalker, Leia. Obi-Wan was eventually able to assage Yoda's sense of disapproval in training Luke, however, getting Yoda to begrudgingly agree to train the young boy. Yoda then began to lay himself to rest for the evening, asking his friend from beyond the nether realm of the Force what else he saw of him besides an ugly and old being, and Obi-Wan simply replied, a luminous being. Before Yoda could remark how annoying it was to have one's own words used against them, Obi-Wan's spirit had dissipated, and for the first time in quite a while, Yoda felt an eagerness and excitement for the next day. I've mentioned in previous videos that Yoda has been a favorite character of mine since I was a young Padawan, and reading this story for the first time made me feel so joyous, happy, and even a little sad. It's my favorite from the collection of short stories in From a Certain Point of View, and one I'd highly recommend. 
but were you guys aware of how and when Yoda had first learned that Obi-Wan had become one with the Force and could return as a Force ghost? Let us know down in the comments. Want more Star Wars content? Check out some of our other videos. Please like and subscribe, and stay nerdy.